Whoa! It's Woolsey. Time I'm recording this. It's currently the 7th of February. I'm kind of expecting to do multiple recording sessions here, so just vibe out with me. I made this layout as my first 2.2 building series, and by your request, I'm building and releasing the entire thing with this one video. I'm gonna choose a uh, background and ground to start. I just wanna go with the block ones, to be honest. Yeah, this is cool. Like, yeah. We could go with like a gray-ish instead of a uh, orange. Why not? For this video, I'm trying out a blend of live and post commentary. If you're interested, please subscribe and let me know. Thank you very much. I'd love to continue making long length videos with simple projects and just having fun in the editor because this was awesome and we got some really cool results. Now with my explanations out of the way, all I'm doing right now is just filling a little bit of the block design in with a base. I'm gonna stick to what I know for now and then as I learn things, that's when I'll replace my habits and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and hide all of these regular blocks using extra tab hide. To make the first effect in the level, I made a diamond shape using four little circles with groups 7 through 10 and I placed a gradient trigger and then I edit special and put 7, 8, 9, 10. How does that work? Oh, I need to do vertex mode. Yeah, here we go. What I want to do is invert the level. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. You see, changing the color of the gradient object when it's set to invert the level gets some pretty interesting results because it's not only changing the color of this little section, it's changing the color of the blocks inside. We're going to make this on edit to layer five, so it's all separate. Then I'm going to copy paste build helper and move it to edit to layer number six. I'm going to take all of the dots here. And now that they're on a new group, I can safely move them around and create another set on this group. Radiant. So I want to make a pinwheel. That's what I'm thinking of. I know a pinwheel is so outdated at this point. So I just followed the exact same process with build helper automatically assigning everything to new groups. So I didn't have to remake everything. And I just rotated it around. Maybe it might just be better to do like a white gradient. See if I change the blocks. Now the whole level kind of changes in vibe, right? I decided to go with this subtle color scheme, which makes the blocks just brighter than the background. I've also placed this star object right in the center, which is a part of this rotation trigger as the center center group ID. All of the dots, which make up the edges of the gradient, have group number 23 on them, which just rotates five times around in a circle in 20 seconds. And the result makes it sweep right over the blocks and create a really dynamic looking effect here. See, look, the particles are getting inverted too. Since the song is called Snow, I put snowflake particles and I made them increase in their scale and rotation in their lifetime. And I placed the object at the back of the level as a single object background that has a lot of spread and covers most of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like this. This is cool. Just adding some little arrows and chains to fill up the part here. I'm keeping the details simple so I don't clutter up the level considering there's such a blinding effect there. So if I put blending here, that's so cool, in my opinion, anyway. Everyone's gonna have different tastes with like the colors and stuff. This level is gonna be an idea dump and I'm here for it. It's just like a nice splash of color. The center of rotation is 24. So if I move 24 really far out of the picture, like down 500 on an ease in movement, just as we exit this ball section, what happens? Does the pinwheel just disappear? It can. That's not bad. I'm gonna take a screenshot real quick. I'm gonna put it in paint and I'm gonna get a color pick of this. It tells me it's F8DEB0. I'm just gonna type that into a color channel and boom, we now have a square the same color as that big invert effect. Once again, just making structures and base blocks for the following part so I can start making my area tint effect. I just want to mention how I'm covering a little bit extra outside the blue line, just in case there's any camera changes. Like, there's a cube portal right here, so I'm just extending the blocks upwards so they don't go off screen. I keep forgetting about these buttons. I've been using the mini block here for half spacing, but I forgot that these exist as half space buttons. Don't get me wrong, I love the new editor, but I just can't shake the muscle memory of the old one, man. I'm just gonna select everything here and make that six and six base and detail and give a new group 30. Then I just place the area tint trigger. I go to edit object and there's a big intimidating menu here, but first off I have to target that group 30. And I'm gonna center it around the player. I'm gonna depict it like this. Say we are the star right here. That is us as the player. This circle is what the length in this box represents. The longer the length, the more that the effect is going to be spread out. Let me just crank this to 100. We're gonna choose a color channel. Let's choose seven and we'll make this a light orange. If I put seven and crank the tint up to max, as we pass the blocks, they are going to be tinted orange around my area. So if I go down, the blocks at the bottom are tinted. If I go up, the blocks at the top are tinted. Oh my goodness, the camera changes. Then I placed a ton of pillows behind the level with a similar color to the background and used the HSV setting inside the area tint trigger to increase the brightness. And let's just test out how that looks with the shining behind them. 
This is looking pretty weird. I should probably add a little bit of movement here and there to make it a bit better. Let's assign all of the blocks to group 32, and then we'll assign all of the background blocks to group 33, and these are going to move differently. This time we'll use an area move trigger. We're going to make the length the similar 100. Make sure it's targeting first 31. P1, we're going to make the move distance plus 100 like this. I'm going to copy paste this trigger and then target 32 and make the move distance backwards. So there's going to be two sets of area move triggers. One that you'll see will move the blocks up and one that will move some of the blocks down and yikes. The solution is to change the setting on the second page from this option to this one, which makes it go from an effect like this, where these objects are the ones affected inside the circle, to an effect like this, where these are the objects affected on either side of these white lines and the middle is unaffected. Notice how no matter how far up or down it goes, the effect is still the same. The results with 100 move distance are completely unsight readable. I ended up changing it to 20 and minus 20. This makes it a lot more tame, but much better to play. Ultimately, I chose to make the background blocks fade up to that pale orange too. Then my idea is to place a very tall glow object right here where the player has to go underneath the spike. This is going to be on black blending, so it will initially be invisible. I've got to give this a group 35, and we're going to place an advanced follow for that group number 35, which is going to lock onto the player. We're then going to pulse that group number 35 on with a 0.5 fade in to copy color channel 6, and it's going to hold for a while. Hmm. This glow object is not big enough. I can just lock the warp and then make it much larger like that. So there's a glowy presence around the player as we're going through this part. It's going to scale up four times on the X, but divide four times on the Y. Then I'm just going to copy that exact scale and just flip the checkboxes. So as a rough demonstration, our object is going to be going back and forth like this as soon as we select both of those triggers and create a loop automatically. Over and over again to create a stretching glow background. And with that, it's time to structure the next part. Thankfully, everything I've built so far has been with simple blocks, so this never actually takes too long. Okay, we have to make these blocks fade to black using a color trigger. Let's just make that like a 0.25, something like that. So as soon as we get in, boom. I'm just going to group it all again. 41, we're going to do another area tint. Let's make it go to a light blue. For this block design, I want everything to shine with a few layers. Area tint, 42 around the player, max length. Maybe like a light green. We haven't used that yet. This is going to be on top of everything on T2. And below, we're going to have like a B2 or B3 reset with a new group that can have a different area tint. So we're basically going to layer this up, but switch the way that it works for group number 43. Darker blue for this one. Let's make sure these are both cranked up to the max tint. We're going to have this like splattered look on the blocks. We should probably rotate that. This can be group number 44 together to put on an area rotate, which is going to rotate it like, I don't know, 120 degrees, ease in out. The result is messy, but it's kind of pretty. It's making an old fashioned custom background here. Just locking that group 46 to the x-axis with about 20% of the x movement. So we have like a slow moving background. We're going to add a giant area move for this just for 46 locked onto the player. I think we can have a very sharp elastic out movement so that from the top, we start off with a pinwheel background that inverts the level with our snowflakes too. Moving into our very orange and very lively little swing copter section with our spinning camera too. And our dual section that pushes all of these blocks out of the way. Uh, so you may be wondering what all of this is. I accidentally deleted one of my rotation triggers, so I made six more with like a cool snap where it goes minus five, plus four, minus three, plus two with zero second camera movements. And I know it, it sounds like it's going to be weird, but look, it's kind of cool. I'm going to make a hue loop. This is kind of a weird statement. I've never really said a hue loop before. It's kind of dancing around the minus 45 plus 45 sort of vibe. But I do not want my player color to change. So with a shader trigger, I am making sure that goes B1 at the highest. And I should be able to just create a loop of these. Now we have this really cool color changing section at the beginning. I can still add pulses and stuff. Background, we can go just plus brightness, plus saturation. Let's go. Short fade time, long fade out. And I think I'm going to do a hue 180 for the time slowdown. This took me a while. I used simple drum sync for brightness only and changed the hue with the other sounds in the song. Ooh, the effect looks sick with that. Changing the block colors at times was risky, but I think it produced some interesting results. Ooh, what the chicken wing? This part looks so good now. This is the much needed spice that this part deserves. You can change the layer of the gradients as well, and you can put it above the ground. <gasps> 
Oh, that looks so sick. Right here, we're leaving a very bright section and going into a part that's going to have black blocks to transition. I think it makes sense to set up a lens circle trigger right here. My visibility isn't great. This is all you can see going into this jump. To try and make the edges clearer, I added some glow behind with area tint yet again. I just really think it's important for this transition to have visibility while also being very suspenseful with the black glow here. Changing this section to a green orb that moves into place. Just so you can see the orb coming, you hit it and then you transition into the new part. This structuring section is actually completely opposite to the other one so far. Instead of placing the squares inside the blocks, I'm covering the whole screen and removing chunks so that the blocks have nothing inside. Okay, just need to decrease the fade time and then set the background very swiftly to black, just like this. I'm like a point four. As long as it goes black before this rotated part starts. Okay, so you'll notice that you now can't tell the difference between there being blocks and there not being blocks. This is called a mask and makes it so that objects on the layer below are only visible inside the blocks, as you can see with this glow piece. Using this idea, I made a giant black hole particle, similar to what I made in my first ever particle editor video, and I made it follow the player's every movement with the advanced follow trigger. I copied and pasted that same particle in a different color to go on the layer above, which adds a little color to the inside. I then decided the background wasn't showing enough, so I spent a very long time removing more of the mask and adding more spikes around the player, which actually helps with the part's sight readability, because you can see exactly what not to do. <sighs> As you can tell, I was relieved to have that done. Guys, I think I'm officially area tint carried. I'm just gonna make all of the spikes do that. I've done this like four times in this video already. It's kind of crazy, not gonna lie. Okay, this orange color works just so they go more orange as I get closer to them. I can maybe go pink or purple though, just to match what's on the inside. Let's just set that up real quick on color channel 15. We could do a 15 and then we can grab another group and put 16, which can be like a light purple. Making sure I put the inverse effect on just so the objects fit out as I get to them and then go brighter around the edges. Kind of decided just to use chains for the decoration if the camera trigger would get out the way. I'd also like to use that detail color on a giant arrow that shows me exactly where to go. I think this is really helpful and they're just a really bold obvious detail that you can't really hate. I think I'm gonna get rid of these details replacing them for very stretched out glow details. Oh my goodness look how colorful this is now. I love it dude. I'm gonna create a few extra pillars that I can use for a little bit of block design. Again, just using that area tinted group for a little section here. Okay, it's not bad, but I think it could be even more colorful if I use the second area tint group. Remember, these spikes are on 59 and the rest is on 60. Move them to the left by a mini block and then copy paste, half space them to the right. We can put them on 59 and maybe just down a mini block, something like that. I think I like this pattern more. It has more flavor to it. I'm going to try and make this advanced follow effect a bit more smooth by increasing the easing. This is going to make it lag behind me, but it should also be a lot more smooth as I'm going through instead of abruptly following all of my rotations, especially with the force. For this transition, I'm just fading off the background spiral and then quickly moving all of the blocks away, like the spikes and everything, like right here. Very far to the left in such a short move time in the hopes that I can make a smooth transition out with this, where you can just see everything. Just shift forward and then boom, we're in the pot. For the last part in the level, my idea is just to underlay a ton of fast moving particles below the blocks. So I kind of wrapped the structures around the player. Okay, we're gonna go for 14 and 14, so it's all black for this part. For the first particle effect, I was picturing high speed motion lines. So I tried my best to warp up some glow strips that shoot across the entire screen really quickly. B5, below the blocks, Yes, now we're cooking. We're gonna copy paste, warp it a bit larger, put it on the next layer, and then change the colors to maybe like a purple and then a red. <sighs> red would look nice here. We can actually change the way that these look too. We can change the texture. We can put glow here. <sighs> Ooh! I took a while to decide on the third layer, but ultimately I decided on stars. I copied the stars and I put them on the layer above with a less visible color just to slightly texture the blocks with this pattern. Right as we get into the part, 65 locks to the x-axis. It's a bit messy, but there's potential here. The only way I could get the force blocks to stand out in the mix though was to make them black and then put this giant screen behind, which is literally just a big glow pillar that I put in. It's kind of goofy. I'm also just using a very scuffed move trigger to lock the background to the y axis for just 1.7 seconds all the way up here. If you follow the duration line, it's just until the corridor ends at the top. So, after a week of building and editing this video, I finally finished the entire project. Some parts are weaker than others, but overall, I'm super happy with the result. And I really hope you've enjoyed watching this building experience.
Let's go. I'm lost for words, dude. This took so long. And as you're seeing this, the level is available right now. Run it up. Let me know what you think. I'm sorry if it's bad. Thank you so much for watching this Jump to Dash video. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe. And have a good day.